Welcome to the Milk and Cookies podcast. This is the super amazing podcast that's absolutely everything to do with American football and nothing to do with Milk and Cookies. My name is Alex. We're joined with Anthony. We got Frankie and we got our special guest for today. We got Zach of Payo Time here. Zach, you want to give us a quick introduction? Yeah, on YouTube, I go by Payo Time. Uh, my real name is Zach. It's not a secret or anything like that. But, uh, <laughs> yo, thanks for having me on the Milk and Cookies, co- Milk and Cookies <laughs> podcast. I want to mess that up. No, um, <laughs> And uh, I uh, I talk mainly about the Rams on my channel. I would say like ninety percent Rams content, ten percent, or I'd say like eight percent, like the rest of the NFL, and then two percent is just pure nonsense. Um, and yeah, I have, I'm just having the most fun on YouTube as possible. <laughs> hey man, there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, that's the whole point of having YouTube is just to have fun, right? Yep. But right. Thanks so much for coming on for today. So yeah. right now we got week 18 overview of what mm-hmm. happens. What a crazy week. Woo, we have baby. Upsets left and right. Jacksonville, Jacksonville pulling a stunner, kicking Indianapolis out of the playoffs completely. Oh, goodness. What happened? We, Pittsburgh made the it. The Raiders. The Raiders. I mean. The Lions. The Lions. And the Lions and Tigers and Bears. So the much. Seahawks. I mean, everybody. All the division. The, Gi- the Giants ran a quarterback sneak from their own four-yard line on third and nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were they thinking? Okay. Play, play play question about that. that. Question about that. What's the worst play? The Giants r- running a quarterback sneak on a third and nine, oh. cl- like, close there. Or – um greg williams calling an all-out blitz against the raiders last year because bo- i think both those calls got those gentlemen fired oh wow or, i completely forgot about the greg williams that's a good question that's a fantastic I think they're question. both horrible i'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you my answer um Peo. i'll go with i'll go with the giants okay. because i think what greg williams may have thought when he called that all-out blitz was if we're going to end this game, I want to go after the quarterback because there was a game, the Saints did that against the Cowboys in 2019. They called an all-out blitz, and Dak Prescott was under duress. He threw up like a, a, a lollipop, so to speak. It fell incomplete. The Saints won the game. So that can work. It didn't in that instance, maybe because the Jets are cursed. I don't know. <laughs> you can't, I'm third and nine from your own four-yard line, a quarterback sneak. That's trash. Designed to get four you know what the Giants the, the Giants you know what the Giants also messed up with that fan appreciation yeah giveaway oh, that was my the favorite free story. medium fan water appreciation soda. my ass medium sodas for everyone <laughs> it's a medium soda that's like six bucks yeah but fan appreciation for a free soda should have worn my Joe Burrow jersey on this. I I um I'm I'm not a Ram season ticket holder, but I had I had a subscriber of mine send me this, and uh, this is what Ram season ticket hold, holders got. I'll say now that's treating your fans right. Yes, that's, yeah. That's that's how you're <laughs> supposed to treat your fans. It's not a free medium <laughs> soda at an overpriced stadium out of a team or just, just or just 13. or just build the best stadium in the world. <laughs> that works too. Out the nicest Rangers. stadium in the world. All right, so uh, <laughs> ignoring Anthony's comment there. Um, hey, hey, hey. The Raiders do have a nice stadium. They do. They do have a nice stadium. Nice. Uh, I don't think it's. Bengals the won best. there earlier this year. Yeah. yeah and the Raiders are going to win in Cincinnati. Well, you wish. Yeah. It's going to happen. This is going to be a heating, a heated rivalry right there. Just have you seen the weather forecast for the game on Saturday? Like what? I don't read degrees? Cincinnati weather. Yeah, well, oh, oh, oh. Whose fault's that? Yours or mine? I'm sorry, I'm not the one that lives there. I continue. All right, so back on track here. So uh, just to start off, just going to go through some games. Um, other than Jacksonville, because I already know Anthony's going to say Jacksonville, what game this week surprised you the most? Surprise. Not what's the most entertaining. Surprise. The Lions. The most. All right, well, that was. Uh, uh, the Lions was a surprise, but I don't think it was that much of a surprise just in the sense of, like, the Green Bay pulled their players in you know most of the second half. I mean, uh, for me, I I gotta go with this big surprise being that Chargers Raiders game because literally all week people speculated. They talked about like, okay, what if like Jacksonville somehow beat the Colts, and then um, the Steelers beat the Ravens, 
and they were put in this scenario like okay they're not actually gonna tie and then it gets you know the raiders go up 14 and then the chargers come back and tie it and it's like okay we're in overtime no no and the fact that it went down to two uh, seconds left but but the, the raiders were gonna kneel they were actually yeah no kneel. absolutely they were and then the chargers were dumb enough to call a timeout and that's what changed their mind. It's crazy. <laughs> so I mean, surprising. We t- I'll say this, Peo and Anthony. Going for it on fourth down from your own <laughs> in yard line. <laughs> and and by the way, if you're going to do that, fine. Let Justin Herbert throw the damn ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't mm-hmm. run it up the middle with Austin Eckler. It's, you know what? I'll say this. I know Eckler is potentially, and if you can argue for the right you stats, know, he's a top five running back. But when you have Justin Herbert's arm that he can throw bombs 40, 50 yards at a time, why do you run the ball? Just throw the ball. I got That's another surprising do. game. Hmm. The Dolphins Patriots. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Even though, like, there's, I guess, you know, there's this thing that, you know, New England struggles with the Dolphins in Miami. Um, it's yeah no it's it's been it's been a very reoccurring thing the dolphins have swept the patriots for the first time since 2000 so it's been 21 years since we've won both games in the season so round of applause for us yeah we still didn't make the playoffs um Should've. and then what else but yeah there's been a history there's been so much history last year we uh, we beat the patriots in miami this year we beat the patriots in miami and then the glorious 2018 game that will forever be known as the Miami Miracle happens. Uh, Nothing will ever beat that game, in my opinion. But so I would say, you know what? The most surprising game is not the one that was the best. It was Pittsburgh because of the snowball yeah. effect of what happened. Yeah. You know, Big Ben's supposedly last game of his career turned into a win. Nobody speculated. And then it was like, oh my God, Jacksonville won. And then it's like, well, I called it too. I called it. You did. And you know what? Sometimes the stats don't lie. But when you look at it, it's like, okay, you have Jonathan Taylor up against Jacksonville. Like on paper, that's not really a matchup that you're going to think, oh, I think Jacksonville's got this one. That's that's the part that really said, I think me and almost every other person that was a, you know, an avid NFL fan to be like, yeah, Indianapolis is going to get into the playoffs. I work with the Colts fan. I haven't seen him, but he's not a happy camper. Give give him a hug. <laughs> give him a nice big hug. Just say I'm sorry. Oh, I mean, he has to. I, mean, I don't know what he's feeling because the Colts, after they beat the Cardinals, I mean, people were you know maybe considering them to be a sleeper in the AFC, and all they had to do was beat Anthony's Raiders in Week 17 at home. Which I think a lot of us thought they would. They didn't. But if you want to say that losing to Jacksonville cost the Colts a playoff game, fine. I'll say this. There were a lot of other games this year they could have won that they didn't. Remember that Monday night game of Baltimore in week five when they were up 22 to three? Mm -hmm. They let that one get away. The Ravens ended up turning into a pumpkin this year. That's a bad loss. They had Tennessee on the ropes in week eight. They lost that game. They could have beaten Anthony Tampa Bay in week 12. They didn't. There were some games they could have won earlier that they didn't. The Raiders game especially. So. I mean, yes, losing Jacksonville, it's no excuse. I'm surprised by it, too. But at the end of the day, you can go back and look at other instances where they could have won and they wouldn't have been in the winning in situation. You play, you play with fire, that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, it's also worth to notice that Indianapolis did start out 0-3 this year to start off. That is true. They started off with a very bad, bad start, and they were able to look – they were able they to convince good, people man. that they were a sleeper team, let alone I saw people saying that they were a Super Bowl contender at certain points because of Jonathan Taylor. To now, but oh, this is what in. this is what the Colts got messed up with. You had Andrew Luck, then you had Philip Rivers, and now you got blessed with Carson Wentz. I wouldn't and, even say blessed with Carson Wentz. I think they they've lost the trade at this point. I wouldn't even say they lost I think it's still it. Still too and, soon to really tell, but. I'm going to go as far as to say I think the Indianapolis Colts are going to take a dip because they don't have a first-round pick. That's the Eagles' property right there. And Plus if Jonathan Taylor – Yeah, and yeah, they, need, they need a receiver. 
Hey, and who he, needs first round picks? Yeah, I know. Rams, <laughs> especially right there. You the guys want a first round pick until when? 2024, 2025? That's our next 2024. And we'll probably mean, trade it away next you'll year. You'll probably trade it away. <laughs> you mean 2015? Yeah, no. Speaking of Philly, that game on Saturday night, I think surprised me. I did not expect it to be Dallas running away with it. I mean, it's also Philly rested their starters, mm-hmm. first off. So not all their full starters were playing. And you had Gardner Minshew for crying out loud at your quarterback. But it's also worth to mention, and this is one of the very few situations that you'll probably not see in the NFL for another year to come, that the team with the better record a week before the playoffs kept their starters in while the team that had the losing, the you know, the lesser record rested everybody because the Eagles had That's already a clinched a playoff spot going into the final week, week 18, while Dallas was still vying for what, the second seed or something like that? Because I don't think they could get the first, but they're yeah. still vying for the second. So it makes sense. But, hey, 51-26 and even the Eagles' second stringers and then, were still able to pull it together. 26 you know who the Eagles got? It's not bad. You know who the Eagles got this Sunday at one? Yeah, the Bucks. Tampa Bay. Yeah, the Eagles. I'm excited for that game. Exits. I'm not going to lie to you. I've seen – Tampa's going to win. I've seen you know? some stats lately, and I think some people will be like, oh, Eagles might pull an upset, like, you know, like the Washington game, and the, the Bucks-Washington game last year. Yeah. The Eagles, like, strength of schedule for win is 31st in the NFL. They're 0-7 yeah, the, against teams who made the playoffs. And, 0-7. Yeah, exactly. and seven. Yep. And – Go ahead. Tam- Tampa's getting players back that is much needed. Much not, needed. Not, not, yeah. not Antonio Brown, though. I'm happy he's off the team. I'm happy he's off the team. Our receivers okay. have our receivers have stepped up. I, I think the only way the Eagles beat the Buccaneers is if they truly play the ball hog game. Um, which they can do. And they and, could do. You but... know, if you if you have a, a team that can run the ball effectively, you can play the ball hog game in, in, in the playoffs. And you know, that can that's how a team that's not as talented as their opponent wins the game quite often and so i i i'm not saying that the buccaneers are going to lose to the eagles by any means however it wouldn't totally shock me if that was cry. the big upset of the weekend i would I don't, think, I don't think it would shock anybody if philadelphia beat tampa bay given how this season has gone in, in general but Peo brings up a great point because remember, remember, guys, in 2018, when New England played at Kansas City for the AFC Championship, and that New England team was not as talented nor as explosive as that Kansas City team. What did New England do in that game? They took the ball in their first possession, ate up eight-plus minutes off the clock, scored a touchdown. They won the time of possession battle by more than 20 minutes. How do you stop an opposing offense? Sometimes it's about – not even getting them on the field for long periods of time. But here's my thing, though. The Bucks have a great defense. That's and true. We have a great defense. So I, I have a feeling I've, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of four and outs, a lot of four and outs, and a couple three, um, three yard, not three yard drives, but like three consecutive first round drives. But I don't, I don't see it being the whole game. Like, run the ball, time the times off the clock. The Eagles only have Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, and Devontae Smith's wide receiver one. Who's their other big name receiver? Dallas Goddard. Still, I mean, still barely heard much about him. But here's the thing: it is, here's here's the thing Sam, Sammy, the Eagles. Sammy Watkins is on there too. Oh, I didn't even know that. Here's the thing: I, I didn't know that. So I got, I got. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Anthony, to your point, Tampa's corners last year was were so good in the postseason. Yeah. And Devontae Smith were as good as he is. Yeah, it's going to be – and this is something I think with Jamar Chase too with, with the Bengals. And then – Receivers in the playoffs, it's a whole different game. Those corners are going to be pressing, bump and run at the line of scrimmage. I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of blitzing. And Tampa – and what makes Tampa we, so good is – they can blitz with three. They can blitz with four pass rushers. Yeah, that's what I like. And we're getting, we're getting healthy right at the time I wanted it to be. And getting Sha- we're getting Shaq Barrett back. We're getting Levante David. Unfortunately, R- Richard Sherman's done for. He's well. He well, Richard Sherman. I mean, 
I kind of forgot Richard Servin was even with the Bucks. He got hurt. It's he's been having hamstring Achilles issues. So. He lasted longer than AB. Than a- I mean, that is true. He's still on the team. But here, just let me let me let me have two things and then we'll move on to another team. Uh the Eagles have a lot of very good, very fast runners. Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott. They have Devontae Smith, who is a very undersized wide receiver, but you know what? He's been a huge surprise for us so far this year. And also, I would also like to mention, this is not the first time that the Eagles have gone to another stadium in this position and won. Remember, was it 20? What was the year that they, they, the year after they won the Super Bowl, they went nine and seven going to Chicago. That was 12 and four. And that what was happened? the next year. That was the next year. And they pulled an upset. Now look at Tampa Bay. Tampa is 13 and four. The Eagles are nine and eight, pretty similar yeah. going to another field, another stadium with a team that was destined to sweep the Eagles. I remember when they played Chicago, everybody's like, Chicago's defense is going to shut them down. The offense is going to outscore them. You know what the happens? Eagles? Mm-hmm. Back in what, 20, 2018? Yeah, there was 20. I don't think Khalil but Mack, Khalil Mack I'm was looking, a factor in that game. No, he wasn't. I'm looking at it right now, though. The Bucks versus Eagles in tw- this year. Like the sixth game of the year, looking at the stats, Brady was 34 42, 297 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. And Jalen Hurts was 12 of 26, 115 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Look, Anthony, I'm not saying the Bucs are going to lose. I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just saying. Is, like, no, I understand. All right. Now let's move on to. Can I, can I say two. one more thing, Alex? About one more. The All right. Go for it. Go for it. If anyone thinks Dak Prescott, and Payo, I want your take on this. If anyone thinks Dak Prescott is the reason why they lose games, it's not. Dak Prescott is not the problem when the Cowboys lose games. Their receivers drop passes, and sometimes the offensive line's a little leaky. Dallas might win on Sunday against the 49ers, but if they they have to go to Tampa Bay, I would not take them, even if it's a million dollars to do so. Payo, what do you think about Dak? Yeah, no, like, I agree. You know, the reality is Dallas is a playmaking team, right? If they make plays, they win. If they don't make plays, they lose. Yeah. Like, my take is this. The whole first game of the season, if Dallas made those three field goals, they would have won that game. If they would have made one of those three field Greg's goals. Greg's their line. Oh. Or an extra point. So all I'm, all I'm saying position. is yeah. this. All I'm saying is this. I forgot what I was going to say. All right. So, That's anyway, all I forgot what I was going to say. One quick thing just to say about the Tennessee Houston game, and I'm going to go off of something. The Tyrod Taylor effect is real. Give Davis Mills a shot next year. Yeah. Give Davis Mills a shot next Who, year. Was it, were we all surprised that Houston got four wins? We, I was yes. the first one to say that Houston was going to go winless. To be honest, I said one win. I said I, one. To be honest, I, I wasn't shocked. Um, when you actually look at what Houston's team was coming into this game, it was a lot of veteran players on one-year contracts. Um, Houston was actually the oldest team in the NFL this year. And not, not that they had were stacked with talent, but they had enough players that you felt they would win a couple of games that they weren't supposed to win. I mean, I, I agree. But it also goes back to the one thing I remember when I said, Davis Mills isn't going to be a factor, and Tyrod Taylor isn't going to have anybody on offense that's going to make anything. They still had Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks was still a factor. Brayvon Jordan, the second-year tight end out of Miami, he was a factor. And you know what? At the rate that Davis I'm Mills saying, Mills. give Davis Mills a shot next year. Now – With his Mike Lennon in the making. Yeah, baby Mike <laughs> Lennon. So, Peo, this Draft is going to be directed right towards you. So, the Rams won the division, correct? Yes, they did. Okay. NFC West okay. champs. Woo-hoo. Okay, so they won the division off of Arizona losing against Seattle. But also, it also came to the fact that the 49ers kind of did a little bit of a miracle there with that last second interception. Now, I understand divisional matchups are never really a good sign to tell, oh, a team is failing. Oh, a team is succeeding. Because look at Jacksonville. Look at Miami beating the Patriot, uh, the Patriots. The Lions, for God's sakes. So you're going into this week, going into the wild card of playoffs against a divisional rival at home in Arizona. Are you worried that Arizona might be able to pull an upset, or do you think that you have enough to take them out? Yeah. Hey, you know what? Um, 
I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Uh, it, you know, I, 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 the Rams were so bad for like 17 years. And so I, I'm, I love having a team that has expectations. Um, I love the fact that, you know, we're expected to win this game. And if we don't, people are going to be ticked. Um, and I, I, I love, I love that so much, but I do believe the Rams can beat this, this Arizona team twice. Uh, they beat us once earlier in the year. We be, beat them in this, the second year. I just think right now the Rams are playing better football. I also think, um, Cliffs Kingsbury can outcoach, um, his, you know, himself at times. Uh, we've seen that in this latter part of the season. And, uh, I just think that, uh, you know, I think if the Rams play their game, they can win this win this for sure. I I got a question. If the Rams win, if the Bucks win, and the Bucks play the Rams, do you see it being a close game or a blowout? I I think the Rams can take on the Bucks because we've done it the past two times, Anthony. <laughs> Mind you, Anthony, the Bucks' first loss was at the hand of the Rams. I called it too. You I did call it, it too. Yeah. You did, yeah, you did. Actually. But if it's in Tampa, if it's in Tampa behind our home fans well we beat you in tampa last year mm. but right, we well, I, I, I honestly just think the rams defense actually matches up really well with the strengths of the bucks offense and that's why we've been able to do it that's like, why it's, it's been such close games i feel like we're going into the playoffs the, no we are the rams outside of losing to san francisco and there's no shame in that i think because I think San Francisco is really good and better than their record shows. The Rams, have, since losing to Green Bay, they've won every other game besides the San Francisco game. So I think they're going to win on Monday night, and they're going to win big. I feel like we're not even talking about the Cardinals. And here's a team that was 10-2, and two, two games up on the Rams, and the Rams are now the NFC West champions hosting the Cardinals in the playoffs. The Cardinals are leaking major. Slowly but surely. Whatever that's, you call it. The, the you know Cardinals what? have lost four of their last five games. Yeah, that's, that's true. I, mean, it's, I think everybody's also – It's not the like they're losing were. to good teams either. They lost to the – losing the Rams is fine. But they lost at Detroit big. They lost yeah. to Minneapolis, who ended up missing the playoffs. And they lost to Seattle, who was basically already making golf course reservations. So, now, one more question for you, Fayo. Of the six other teams in the NFC playoff picture right now, what team are you the most worried about playing, assuming that you will have to play them at one point? Um, like, there's the Niners, just because they've Packers. had the Rams numbers, uh, you know, for the past, you know, six times we've played them. But I would love if we could beat them in the playoffs. It would be so <laughs> juicy. Um, but also, yeah, the Packers are, are – That's the team I'm worried, worried about. Um, I, however, at the same time, I feel like the Packers and, and, you know, forgive me for buying the narrative. They're just going to be that one play away from losing in the divisional round or the NFC. Like season. last year, they should have kicked the field goal last year. Well, the past two years, it's been a play. Away. Three. Is it three? I, I know it's, last it's three. Year. Yeah, it's three. Yeah. The Packers have lost the conference game. I'm sorry. The, the, the conference championship game the last three years straight. So I just think they're one one play away from uh, getting out of the playoffs. Now, hypothetically speaking, because I did have as the championship game being the Rams and the Packers early on in but the yeah, season. Rams Bucks. I had Rams Packers. Then I had Packers at number one, and I remember having the Rams at number three. Um, <laughs> are you terrified to play in Lambeau? Assuming that the Packers went out to the conference, do you think Lambeau is going to be a factor, like a huge factor? Oh. Factor for sure, but scared no way. The Rams have been really good on the road. Um, I you know I, Matt Stafford's played at Lambeau a ton in his career. Um, and and honestly, like I think the Rams are just like we're getting Cam Akers back, which I don't think a lot of people are talking a lot about. Um, and yeah, I I just I don't know. I'm a believer in this Rams team. I'm totally biased, but I think they can go into Lambeau and get a win. Hey, Are you never... afraid that Matthew Stafford is turning into a turnover machine? No, because he is a turnover machine, and <laughs> and like he has he hasn't turned into what he is one. But the reality is, like the, the the previous two wins of the Rams, Stafford had three turnovers in each of those games, and the Rams still found a way to win. And 
Stafford has been ridiculously good in the fourth quarter. Like in that Ravens win, he was 14 of 14 in the second half and he was to drive us down the field, get the touchdown to win it. Even in that 49ers game, Stafford gave us the go ahead touchdown. It was our defense that kind of blew it for us. That is a very good point. this real quick. Um, and this, and this might be an obvious question, but I I'm imagining you like, um, Matthew Stafford more than Jared Goff. What's the one reason why you do football IQ? Um, that's just the reality of it. Stafford's got a higher football IQ than Jared Goff does. Okay. All right. Well, I think that'll be it for this episode because I think we are actually less than a minute. So thank you so much for watching. Peo, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, go ahead and check out his channel for everything Rams related. We hope to have you back on in the link, future. Um, link will be in the description below. Of course. But just thank you so much for watching. Our prediction video for the wildcard Browns should be out shortly. But yeah, thank you so much for watching.